probably seen the, the latest numbers while I was making my way over here, but I'll just go ahead and tell you right now. We're up right now. <laughs> We've been here before. We were here in the primary. So you, you all remember that night. We came down. We talked about how we had a lead. We were going to walk it forward from there to victory. So here we go. Yeah. Tell you, during this campaign, I have traveled all over this district. Uh, we're talking, to, actually, let me tell you a quick funny story. <laughs> so, my truck, 2003 GMC Sierra, has been to uh, the Allagash, Lubeck, Freiburg, just about everywhere in between, uh, starting out of here in Lewiston, and today, up in Bangor, she dies on me. <laughs> So the truck carried me as far as it could in this campaign and then said, all right, you're on your own. <laughs> but I have been everywhere. We've, we've seen the sun rising, uh, you know, uh, over on the East Coast. We've seen it setting out on the West Coast. And uh, woken up here in Lewiston uh, one morning and then gone to bed in Allagash the, the very, very same night. So that's the kind of campaign we've run and I'm awfully proud of it. Uh, getting out and about, getting back to the field, that's how, we're gonna, that's how we do it, right? Yeah. Every single place I've gone, there's been people like you that are excited for a new generation of leadership right here in Maine and in the United States. someone that's going to fight for them, and tonight I want to start by saying how proud I am to have earned your trust, your support, and your votes. Thank you so much. So, it's going to be a late night. We're not going to get any final results tonight, but let me tell you this. We're winning it right now, and it looks like Mainers are that much closer to getting that new generation of leadership that they're looking for. Supported my wife Izzy. Yeah. Best, best campaign at uh, I think maybe in the country this election. So. Yeah. I don't talk about breaking through the negativity with a very positive ad. Uh, that was just So way out in the back, as always, hiding out in the back, my campaign manager, John Breed. And let's get real loud and real excited for Margaret Reynolds. Yeah. Michael, yeah. And the rest of my amazing staff, I am so proud of this campaign that we've run. Uh, and you know what is really most moving about this campaign for me is all the volunteers, all the people that have gone out there countless hours and uh, knocked on doors and told people why it is that they're supporting me, uh, what, what the message is that we believe in, uh, which is fighting to protect health care for working people, fighting for higher wages, fighting for unions, uh, fighting for the Big shout out goes to these firefighters standing right out there. Yeah. One of the first ones to get behind me and endorse this campaign. Uh, had faith in me. Uh, that goes back for years that we've worked together, and I want to say thank you, brothers. I appreciate it so much. Brothers and sisters, thank you. I've had your back, you had my back, and I am so proud of it. <laughs> so, campaigns are tough, but knowing that there are people who believed in me uh, as much as I did gave me the energy that I needed to run this race. And one of the nicest surprises of the campaign was actually the kids. So, they can't vote. <laughs> but they gave me something just as good, which was a boost when I needed it most. To see this race through their eyes always put things right in the proper perspective. So, 
For instance, just the other day, you can see this little one over here, Lily. Yeah, everyone say hi to Lily. It's my best friend and his wife and their daughter, Lily. And we were watching the uh, Patriots game uh, a few weeks back, and one of those negative ads about me came up, and she said, Uncle Jared, if they knew who you were, they wouldn't say those things. <laughs> Uh, I had a little girl today at the polls just run up and give me a big old hug. And, uh, you know, a little guy named Beecher up in Island Falls who uh, came to meet me at one of my breakfasts and had a red hot dog for breakfast. And I was so excited to meet the Marine that he saw on TV. He didn't think it was really me. So, uh, but geez, you know, that's what that's what this is, this campaign is about too. And you, you, you realize real quickly that they're, they're listening. Uh, they see all the ads, they see what these campaigns are about and what they're talking about. And that's why I'm proud uh, that the ads that I put my name on, the ones that say, you know, I'm Jared Golden, I approve this message, I've been positive, focused on working class issues, on raising wages, on you know, protecting people's health care, protecting Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. So I think we can all feel good. met on the campaign trail. It meant a lot to me. They're both in their 80s and uh, used to work in the paper mill in Bucksport. They said that for the first time in a long time they felt like the party they knew, the party that made them proud to be Democrats, was back. They said, they said that I won their vote the moment I told them that I was a labor Democrat and proud of it. And this campaign we brought them back to our party's roots. Our movement and our party is about working people, it's about health care, it's about wages, it's about protecting Social Security. Forget that, it's about making Social Security better and stronger for people today and future generations. It's about the promises that we've made to the working class people of this country, and those are promises that I intend to keep. Our roots are about representation focused on the people we represent, no matter who they are. We're about putting the people over the corporations and special interests who would continue to manipulate our political system, including our own party, for their own benefit. Yes. That's why I am so proud, folks, let me tell you, I am so proud that we haven't taken one single cent of corporate money in this campaign. People told me I couldn't do it. They said, Jared, it's like tying one hand behind your back. Why would you do that? Well, the people of this state, of this district, of this country, in so many races all over the United States of America have stepped up to say, that's not true. We can do it. We can do it without the corporate greed and the corporate money. That's why we've raised $5 million from regular people with average contributions in the dozens, not the hundreds or thousands. We're talking about an average contribution of less than a hundred dollars from over sixty thousand people. <laughs> you can trust me when I say that I will fight to get money, money out of politics, and I mean it. Getting money out of politics won't just cut back on the influence of the wealthy and powerful. It's going to give me more time to serve people like yeah. you. Yeah. to work for my constituents, no matter what party they belong to or whether they voted for me or not. But the average freshman congressman or congresswoman is expected to spend a big, big portion of their time raising money and just doing fundraising all the time. So how is a representative supposed to do the job of representing their constituents if they got to demote, devote that much time to raising money every single day? I'm, I'm not going to play that game. That's right, Jim. I won't be a part-time congressman. I'm going to hold town halls yes. once again. Yeah. I won't be calling lobbyists and corporate PACs, dialing for dollars, or to trade my votes for their money. I'll be calling you, the people of Maine, the only people that I am accountable to, to make sure that I've earned your support. Yes. Yeah. I look forward to not spending weekends with lobbyists and donors, but instead getting on a plane back to Maine so that I can be at the mill gate like I have been throughout this campaign at 4.30 in the morning talking to workers while they go to work, while they come out from working the late shift, 
standing down on the docks uh, in Stonington, meeting working people, standing outside the hospital, talking to nurses. That's what we've done throughout this campaign. That's what we're going to do. These are the folks that have moved the names of Tommy Ford. I'm going to keep visiting those docks, those farms, the forests, the loggers, the fishermen. And we're going to make sure that they, the teachers, thank you very much, of course. We're going to make sure that they have a voice in Congress again. That's what, that's so important, folks. That's what this campaign is about. People in this district deserve a representative who's going to come to them, not one whose office is by appointment only. They deserve... They deserve someone who will seek out their wisdom, learn from their experience, who knows them well enough to know what the right vote is, to take care of them, take care of our families, and take care of the state. That's what I've done during this campaign with an open heart and open mind. I've listened. Imagine that, right? And you know what? The people I spoke with were crystal clear about what they wanted from Congress. They want someone who will have their back. That's why I'm going to do everything I can to protect and expand access to health care for every single man and every American. And we're not, I'm not going to vote to take coverage away from you or to let insurance companies discriminate against sick Mainers, charge the elderly more for their care. You can do it. That's right. <laughs> That's why I'm going to continue to support this national movement to raise wages for working middle class people and oppose any more tax giveaways for the wealthiest and most powerful in the world. That's why I'm going to fight tooth and nail to protect Social Security and Medicare so that Mainers who have worked hard and paid into the system can have a secure and stable retirement. It shouldn't be a thing of the past. we got to bring that promise back to working middle class people. Leaders want a new generation of leaders who will fix our dysfunctional political system so that it serves the people first and foremost, and I'm going to do my part to give it to them. The truth is, these are not radical demands. <laughs> these, these are the demands of regular Mainers, Democrats and Republicans and Independents alike, who recognize that we all do better when all of us are getting ahead together. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. These are the demands of people who know that the best thing we can do for our economy is to make sure that all Maine families can afford the basics in life. We're not asking for too much. We're not asking for a radical anything here. The basics, folks. Covering our emergency. Being able to cover an emergency. To save a little bit for the future. You know, to earn a living wage, a respectable wage for our hard work. That's all we've ever asked for and wanted. To be able to go to the doctor without breaking the piggy bank and putting yourself into bankruptcy. But those are our demands. That's the vision of Maine that I've fought for my entire life. That's what I'm going to fight for in Congress. That's what the Democratic Party has fought for as long as I've known it. How about you? Come on. So when I was in the Marines, I learned a thing or two about leadership. The best leaders were the ones who didn't worry about who got credit for getting the job done. They just worried that the job got done. And when things went wrong, the best leaders were the ones who took responsibility and then worked double time to get back on track and get back to getting the job done. Imagine what Congress could do if we had more leaders like that. Just imagine, folks, people willing to take responsibility and focus on delivering results. That's the kind of leader that I look up to, and it's the kind of leader I'm going to be for you in Washington. Thank you so much. Let's get out there.